Currently, the periodic table of chemical elements includes 118 different types of atoms, which make up all the substances around us. The element's atomic number in the table represents nothing other than the number of protons in its nucleus. As atomic mass increases, atoms become less stable. Elements beyond bismuth are highly unstable and decay over time, transforming into simpler elements. The most massive elements can only exist for fractions of a second. This is why we don't encounter in nature elements heavier than plutonium with atomic number above 94. Even plutonium is quite rare. However, scientists can artificially create more complex elements by colliding and fusing simpler atomic nuclei. This method has led to the discovery of elements 95 to 118, and research in this area continues. This raises the question, is there a limit to creating increasingly heavier atoms, or will there be an element officially designated as the last element in the periodic table? In schools, atoms are often depicted like a miniature solar systems, with tiny electrons orbiting a massive central nucleus like planets around the Sun. This model is known as the Rutherford Bohr planetary model. American physicist Richard Feynman, contemplating the Rutherford model, speculated that there might be a limit to the periodic table. Here's how he reasoned. Negatively charged electrons are held in their orbits around the nucleus due to the electric force of attraction between the positively charged protons in the nucleus. They don't fall into the nucleus because they're moving around it at a certain speed, much like how the moon doesn't fall onto Earth or Earth onto the sun. The speed of the electron's rotation around the nucleus must increase with the growing force of attraction, which is determined by the nucleus's charge. The more protons, the higher atomic number is. As the atomic number in the periodic table increases, the electron speed in its atom should increase. Ultimately, this means that it becomes impossible to endlessly increase the mass of the atomic nucleus. Sooner or later, the orbital speed of electrons will reach the maximum allowed speed in our universe, which is the speed of light in a vacuum. They won't be able to move any faster. Consequently, stable electron orbits within the atom become impossible for elements beyond a certain atomic mass. Guided by these considerations, Feynman calculated that the last element in the periodic table would have an atomic number of 137. However, this is likely not the case. Today, we no longer believe that electrons orbit nuclei like planets. If that were true, according to the laws of electrodynamics, they would emit electromagnetic waves, called synchrotron radiation, and lose kinetic energy rapidly, eventually falling into the nucleus. However, this does not happen. Therefore, the planetary model of atoms, as it is taught in schools, is merely an illustration and a crude approximation of reality. Today, we consider it incorrect to discuss the specific movements of electrons, draw their trajectories, or calculate speeds along these paths. According to the fundamental principle of quantum physics, the uncertainty principle, it is fundamentally impossible to precisely determine the speed and position of elementary particles. Therefore, the classical approach with speeds, coordinates, and trajectories in the microscopic world is not very applicable. Quantum physics employs a different, probabilistic approach to describe processes. We cannot say exactly where an electron is at any given moment, we can only determine the probability of finding it in a certain point in space. Consequently, the method of describing the position of electrons in the atom is also different. Instead of speaking of orbits, we talk about orbitals, regions in space where the probability of finding the electron is significantly higher than outside these areas. Feynman's approach to determining the heaviest possible atom, based on this model, is no longer applicable. However, the idea that there might be an upper limit to the number of protons in the atomic nucleus remains relevant. Today, physicists suggest that the boundaries of the periodic table go much further. The most massive possible element could have an atomic number of 173. The reason more complex elements should not exist is slightly different. As the number of protons in the nucleus grows, so does the intensity of the electromagnetic field near the nucleus. For atoms with 173 protons or more, this intensity becomes high enough that electron-positron pairs start to form near the nucleus. This leads to a rapid loss of energy by the nucleus and, presumably, it's almost instantaneous decay. In regards to what will actually happen with atoms having numbers 173 and higher, there is currently no consensus among scientists. Nevertheless, it would be extremely interesting to find out. Similarly, taking a look at Feynman's atom with number 137 from the standpoint of our understanding of electron shells and their interactions with atomic nuclei would be beneficial. However, we are still quite far from that point. As mentioned earlier, the most complex element we have observed is Oganesson with number 118. Even reaching 137, let alone 173, will require a lot more exploration. And physicists are indeed delving into it. Attempts are already underway to synthesize elements with numbers 119, 120, and so on. Either way, 
elements in the range of 120 to 130 hold some intriguing prospects. As mentioned before, all synthesized chemical elements are highly unstable and decay within milliseconds. But it's possible that some isotopes of heavier elements might be relatively stable, stable enough to be theoretically accumulated, stored, and practically utilized, if suitable applications can be found. There are particular hopes in this regard for the as yet unsynthesized element with atomic number 126. Nevertheless, the synthesis of super heavy elements is primarily for scientific purposes. Studying their properties allows us to verify, refine, or even correct our understanding of the forces that form and hold atomic nuclei. By fully mastering these forces, we gain access to technologies that are currently beyond our imagination, much like Archimedes, floating in his bath, could hardly have foreseen that, 2000 years after his discovery, the principle of buoyancy would enable humans to take their first steps into space, achieving free flight. So, as we continue to explore the mysteries of the atomic world, who knows what remarkable discoveries await us. Our journey into the depths of matter will undoubtedly lead to astonishing insights and open doors to new frontiers of science and technology. And as we uncover the secrets of these super heavy elements, the realm of possibilities for humanity will expand further, presenting opportunities that we can only dream of today.